In this first slide, you see a very nice cartoon depiction of the pathogenesis of IPF and how this might be complicated by an acute exacerbation. So what we know about IPF is that there's initially some epithelial disruption. You have the fibroblasts coming in. Uh, these might uh, transform to myofibroblasts. They lay down collagen. And collagen is the scaffold for fi um, fibrotic changes and progressive fibrosis, which results in ultimately respiratory failure. There are many reasons uh, or predisposing factors for IPF. There might be a genetic predisposition in some patients. Environmental factors may play a role. Behavioral factors, factors such as smoking might play a role in, in, in setting off the process. And certainly aging plays a role as well. Now, every patient with IPF is at risk of developing an acute exacerbation. Maybe about 10 to 15% of IPF patients will develop acute exacerbations. Uh, there might be various precipitating factors for an acute exacerbation, including acid reflux, various infections might precipitate an acute exacerbation. Mechanical factors such as stretch might, might uh, precipitate an acute exacerbation. There's also anecdotal evidence and a suggestion that very high FIR2s might precipitate an acute exacerbation. What happens though is that a, a separate or different and distinct pathologic process is set in place that looks like ARDS basically. You have hyaline membrane uh, formation, um, patients manifest uh, on CT and chest X-ray with diffuse alveolar infiltrates superimposed uh, over the interstitial lung disease that characterizes IPF. And generally the prognosis after the onset of an acute, acute exacerbation tends to be quite poor. Acute exacerbations can happen at any time during the course of disease. Patients can have relatively well-preserved lung function. They might have more advanced disease. And sometimes in actual fact, acute exacerbations can be the first manifestation of the underlying IPF.